Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's learn how to graph exponential functions and notice we add a little twist to it. We didn't just write y equals 2 to the x power but 1 quarter times 2 to the x power. So there's a coefficient, a numerical coefficient in front of the 2 to the x power. It doesn't matter if you write y equals or f of x equals, it's essentially the same thing. It's an exponential function. So the way to graph it is to draw a table of values. We start out by plugging in certain values for x, then we find out what 2 to the x is, and then we find out what 1 quarter 2 to the x is. And then we plot those points because essentially this is equal to y. So for particular values for x, we'll get specific values for y for the function of x. All right, so first of all, we get 2 to the minus 3. Now let's put that on the side here. 2 to the minus 3, that is equal to 1 over 2 to the third power, which is equal to 1 over 8. So notice, even though the exponent is negative, the result is not negative, it's 1 over 8. So for x equals negative 3, it is equal to 1 over 8, which is about down there somewhere. Okay, how about when x is equal to, uh, right here we had, uh, oh, oh, we're not done yet. That's not the function, so let me go ahead and put it in here. So that's 1 over 8, and now we have to multiply times 1 over 4, which is 1 over 32, and that's the y value. So instead of plotting when x equals negative 3, y is 1 over 8, it's actually 1 over 32, so it's barely above the x-axis right there. Okay, how about negative 2? Well, we have 2 to the negative 2 power, which is 1 over 2 to the positive 2 power, which is 1 over 4. Of course, we plug that in here, 1 over 4, and then we multiply times 1 over 4, so we get 1 over 16. So you can see it's still a very small number, slightly bigger than what it was over there. All right, how about negative 1? 2 to the negative 1 is equal to 1 over 2 to the 1 power, which is 1 half. So that's 1 half. And then we multiply times 1 over 4, which is 1 over 8. So now it gets to be a little bit bigger. It's right about there, so you can see it's beginning to increase in value. How about when x equals 0? 2 to the 0 power is equal to, well, anything to the 0 power is always equal to 1. So that means when x equals 0, 2 to the 0 is equal to 1 times 1 fourth is equal to 1 fourth. So at this point, it's equal to 1 fourth. Now remember a few videos ago when we had 2 to the x power or b to the x power, it doesn't matter what it is. If there's no coefficient in front like this, any constant to the x power when x becomes 0 will be equal to 1. So normally the function will go through 1, except in this case it's all multiplied by 1 fourth, so instead of 1, we only get 1 fourth at that point. All right, next we have x equals to 1, so 2 to the 1 power, that's equal to 2. 2 divided by 4 is equal to 1 half. So when x equals 1, we're now up to 1 half. All right, what if x is equal to 2? 2 to the second power, 2 to the second power, that's equal to 4. Divided by 4, that's equal to 1. So now when x equals 2, y equals 1. When x equals 3, 2 to the third power, that's equal to 8. Divided by 4 is equal to 2. So when x equals 3, we're now y equals 2. Did I put that in the right place? Uh, there we go. All right. And finally, when x equals 4, 2 to the 4th power is 16. 16 divided by 4 is 4. So that would be when x equals 4, y equals 4. And I guess I'm running out of board space here, but let's do it one more time. 2 to the 5th power is 32 divided by 4, which is 8. And of course, when x equals 5, it's equal to 8. That's off the chart. But now we can connect all the dots. And like that. So you can see, well, not quite as smooth as I wanted it to, so let me try it again. There we go. So there, that's one, that's one half, and so forth. So you can see, we got this smooth increasing curve. Normally, when there's no coefficient in front, it goes to the point y equals one. But since we have a one-fourth on there, it drops it down to one-fourth of one, which is equal to one-fourth. And that is how you graph an exponential function that has both something, some constant to the x power, and a number in front. Of course, if the number in front is bigger, let's say 2 or 3 or 4, then of course that would increase much, much faster. If 
You'll see that later when we explain the differences when the coefficient changes and when the base changes as well. And that is how it's done. Oh, the asymptote? So that's a good question. So it turns out that on this side right here, this reaches the x-axis axis asymptotically. It will never quite get down to zero, but as x becomes more and more into the negative direction, minus 4, minus 5, minus 6, and so forth, the line will get closer and closer and closer to the x-axis, but not quite reach the x-axis. So yeah, it's asymptotically to the x-axis. about the other way? And the other way, it just keeps going up. On the other side, just increase and increase, and you never asymptotically reach anything it for the value of x is not limited at all. Yeah, but the value of x, y increases a lot faster than x. That is true, but that's what the number infinity stands for, right? So you can make y as big as you want. If x keeps getting bigger, y keeps getting bigger, and there's no limit in either direction. So for the domain, x can be any value, and for the range, y can be any value above zero. So essentially, yeah, that's how it goes.